Strong and severe thunderstorms rumbling across central and eastern Kentucky. We've got the very latest warnings and a look at live first alert defender straight ahead. This is the same storm system blamed for several deaths this weekend from tornadoes that hit Arkansas and Texas. We'll have the latest on recovery efforts. And a man accused of attacking a Kroger employee heads to court in Lexington. We'll have the latest on the case. Tracking, alerting, protecting. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. Good afternoon, I'm Jennifer Palumbo on this First Alert Severe Weather Day. Storms are firing up across the region and some of them are severe. You're looking live at Triangle Park in downtown Lexington. The city is just one of several with severe thunderstorm warnings. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has the latest watches and warnings first at four. Chris? Yeah, this line of thunderstorms, Jennifer, as it rumbles across the area, putting down a lot of high winds now, getting reports of a lot of trees down from the stamping ground area down toward Midway and uh, into parts of Woodford County tree down on a car into downtown Richmond as well. Here's live first alert defender as of now. Storms at first blush, not terribly impressive, but it's, again, it's on a localized scale. We're getting a quick burst of some winds greater than 60 miles an hour. Strongest storm now associated with the north central part of this line is right on top of Cynthiana here into the Harrison County area. That'll continue to lift its way onto the east and the northeast. Folks around the Poindexter area and northeast from there will keep an eye on that. That extends a little farther to the south of the southern edge of that, beginning to weaken a little bit into parts of Scott County and across downtown Lexington. Our severe thunderstorm warning is now officially over. Just some general run of the mill showers and thunderstorms out there. An improving sky cam, barely getting in on some rain here on the east side of town. Still severe thunderstorms across parts of Madison County and into Clark County, where we had a wind gust a little earlier recorded at 64 miles per hour. That strong storm is now lifting to the northeast of downtown Richmond. It is right on top of the Clark and Madison County line just to the south of Winchester. Folks around the Hunt area down toward Red House and Doylesville, that one has a lot of wind and a ton of lightning. And we put Defender into 3D mode. Look how tall that particular part of our storm is. So this is the strongest storm that we are tracking across central Kentucky. That is likely going to produce some wind damage as it makes its way out of Madison County into Clark County. Folks in Montgomery County, that will be on your doorstep coming up in about a half hour from now. Southern Kentucky, additional scattered strong and severe storms. This is a severe thunderstorm warning for parts of Jackson County, Rockcastle County. Southeastern Kentucky, very strong storm into Knox County, then a clustering of more general run of the mill showers and storms into southeastern Kentucky. What is out there now is racing its way quickly to the east and northeast. Additional showers and storms will come at us from the west as we go into later this evening. But overall, Jennifer, the storms on a localized scale packing quite a punch with damaging winds. We'll keep an eye on it. Thank you, Chris. And this is the same system that pounded Texas and Arkansas. At least five people are dead, including a young couple who died trying to shield their daughter from the storm. Meantime, emergency crews are searching through the wreckage, looking for survivors and victims. Karen Kafa has the latest. A dramatic glimpse of the moments before a deadly tornado ripped through the city of Van, Texas. A local news crew was covering the storm approaching Sunday night. Cameras were rolling. Daylight on Monday revealed the destruction. Houses shredded to pieces. I would ask that you continue to pray for all the lives that were affected. In this disaster, city officials confirmed two adults were killed, dozens hurt, and at least eight are still missing. Between 50 and 100 homes were either damaged or destroyed. Residents are starting the difficult process of sifting through the debris. The Red Cross is setting up shelters for those who lost their homes. We lost a lot of good properties, uh, but it's a, it's just something that you never expect. But we will be working on it diligently. The Van Zant County judge says he's confident the community will come together during this very difficult time. Van is a strong city, strong community. We will rebuild. Sunday storm damage was not limited to Texas. In Nashville, Arkansas, two people were killed when a storm hit a trailer park. It's been bad. I don't, I don't know that I've seen this kind of damage in Nashville since I've been. In, in the department here for over 17 years. The destruction in Nashville and Van followed a weekend of dangerous weather across the Midwest and South. There goes the school. More than 70 tornadoes were spotted. I'm Karen Kafa reporting. 
Authorities hope people who are still missing will turn up in other locations. We're also tracking a breaking news alert out of Madison County this afternoon. Multiple agencies are searching for an inmate who escaped from the Madison County Detention Center. 27-year-old Alexandria Smith escaped from officials around 2 this afternoon. Monique Blair is live outside the Madison County Detention Center with the latest. Monique. Several different agencies are out searching right now for 27-year-old Alexandria Smith, who escaped today from the Madison County Detention Center at 2.04 this afternoon. Now, jailer Doug Thomas tells me Smith was in the breathalyzer room this afternoon when she was trying to make bond. Now, a jail employee left Smith in the room while she was using the phone. When he left, the, the door apparently didn't close all the way. Now, that door leads to the garage garage door was open. Jailer Thomas says Alexandria Smith fled from the room and then out the garage. Jail employees realized within two minutes that Alexandria Smith had left and they have been searching ever since. Now, Jailer Thomas says since Alexandria Smith was arrested just yesterday, she was still wearing the clothes she was arrested in, which was blue jean shorts and a multicolored flannel button-down shirt. Now, Alexandria Smith was being held on two misdemeanor charges of theft. And now, once she is caught, she faces a felony escape charge. Reporting live in Madison County, Monique Blair, WKYT. Smith is from Madison County, and anyone who has information about where she is should call the Madison County Sheriff's Office immediately. A man accused of slashing a Lexington Kroger employee's face faced a judge this afternoon. Police say Michael Buckner was stealing a cart full of items from the Kroger on Bryan Station Road when an employee asked to see a receipt. That's when police say Buckner pulled out a knife and cut the woman's face. At last check, family members told us the woman was recovering at home. We're digging into Buckner's criminal history and we'll tell you what we found coming up at 5. Lexington police are looking for two people caught breaking into cars overnight. A neighbor spotted the men going through cars early this morning on Mountain Laurel Road. That's off Spur Road. Police have not found the men, but they did find a vehicle loaded with stolen items. Police say most, if not all, of the cars broken into were left unlocked. We'll have reaction from a woman who says some of her items were stolen coming up on WKYT News at 430. And that's just one of the stories our reporters are working on for WKYT starting at 430. Amber Philpott is in the newsroom with some more of the news in progress. Good afternoon, Amber. Good afternoon to you, Jennifer. We are learning new information today about an officer-involved shooting in Bardstown. Police say a man was in a stolen truck, rammed several cruisers during a chase early yesterday, and then a Nelson County Sheriff's deputy eventually fired his gun at the truck, hitting that suspect. This morning, state police identified the suspect as 25-year-old John Fenwick. He's in serious condition at a Louisville hospital. The officers involved in the incident remain on administrative leave. We'll have more on the investigation on WKYT News at 5:30. And today, Kentucky State Police honored the 28 officers who have died in the line of duty. The Richmond KSP Post honored Trooper William Tevis earlier this morning. He was shot in 1963 while arresting a drunk driver. They're also honoring Trooper Clinton Cunningham who was shot and killed while investigating a false report of a break-in in 1979. All 28 fallen KSP officers will be honored today in Frankfurt as part of a National Police Officers Memorial Week event. We'll take you to that memorial coming up on WKYT News at 4.30. That is a look at just some of the news in progress. Jennifer, back to you. Thanks, Amber. Now to stories making headlines across the nation at four. A public memorial today in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, for two young police officers gunned down during a routine traffic stop this weekend. Officers 34-year-old Benjamin Dean and 25-year-old LaCory Tate were shot and killed late Saturday. Four suspects arrested in connection with the deadly shootings faced a judge this afternoon. A lawyer for George Zimmerman says his client was not seriously injured in a shooting in Florida. The attorney says a bullet missed Zimmerman's head in today's shooting in the Orlando suburb of Lake Mary. He says Zimmerman was sprayed with glass from his vehicle's windshield and other debris, but he has now been released from a hospital. Zimmerman was acquitted in 2013 of killing Trayvon Martin, an unarmed black teenager, in a case that sparked protests. 